Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Failing My Way in Public to Success, the Mark Sclair podcast. Thanks for joining the show today. A big wave to my YouTube follower, uh, my mum. Thank you for watching the show and also my followers on Spotify, Apple Play and all the other uh, platforms that Anchor puts me out on. Really appreciate joining the show today. Thank you for taking the time. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm documenting my journey and this is failing my way in public to success. And at the moment, I'm building, and I have been doing this for a while now, my sales training program. Now, with this sales training program, it comes from my experience. So what I've built is I've built this seven principles to building a successful career. So whilst I'm doing this, I need to go back and need to understand stories which I can put in with my training. And one thing which I'm trying to do at the moment is how to build a foolproof job, which is recession proof, which is current market proof, which is change management proof. And I was going through a story just before and I thought it'd be really good to speak about here. Now, before I moved to Dubai, which was 12 years ago, I worked for a property developers in London. Now, if anyone knows my story before, I wanted to be a lawyer, I had a part-time job, which was stuffing envelopes and doing leafleting. And uh, slowly but surely, this leafleting turned into more of a sales role within the company, and I had a choice to make, either continue with college to be a lawyer or take on a sales role. And I decided to take on a sales role. There's a whole story behind that, but that's for another day. Now, this person that took me on for this sales role was a lady called Kate. And she absolutely loved me, I absolutely loved her, and I'm very grateful and thankful because she was the foundation of me building my sales career, really. She really put the, the beginning work in and made me understand what it takes to, to build a career and be successful and, and speak with people and understand them. So I'm always grateful for that. And if you are listening, Kate, really appreciate it. But she was a sales manager within one office within the whole business. Now, we had a great team, I got on well with everybody, and I got on well with everybody within the company. And I do speak about this, that it's important to get along with people in the company and have people champion you. But the problem was, 2007, the company had a sniff that the market was gonna go down, so they were gonna get rid of a lot of people. Now. Kate was the person that brought me in and she loved me and I loved her. As I said, great team, we got on really well. I was doing deals all the time, perfect. Now, her manager approached her, David, and said, we need to get rid of a lot of people. She fought for me, she really put her neck on the line. But the problem was, I had no emotional attachment to David. So when it came to him making the decision of who should go, who should stay, he'd brought on other people which he was emotionally attached to. So when it came down to it, it was either me or them, and I was a lot easier to let go. Even though I was bringing in deals, even though I was making stuff happen, even though I was rising up the ranks and, and being successful in what I was doing, David could easily get rid of me because there was no emotional attachment. And this is what is so important to understand. If you wanna last in a career, you want to build that career up which isn't just about selling you want longevity you want to be recession proof you have to build those relationships with people within the business so when push comes to shove they're going to be fighting for you they're going to be championing you now i had kate and kate did fight for me but when it came down to it she didn't have the final word so it's not a case of oh i didn't choose my um my manager in the right way it wasn't that at all kate was the person that brought me in what I learned, and this is what happens when you go over this now, and it kind of shows up in the light of day, was that I didn't have the relationship well enough with David. And when it came down to it, he was able to make an easy decision to get rid of me. Even though I was bringing in deals, even though I was making stuff happen, he brought in other people who he had, he had their emotional attachment to. So I need you to really think now because I'm sure, I might, you might even be watching this or listening to this now, and you might have lost your job. And you might be thinking, well, I did deals and I was successful and I did this. One thing you've probably not thought of is that you have, didn't have that relationship with that person. And when it came down to it, and they've got people's names on the screen, they're deciding who it is, because your name doesn't pop up to them emotionally, it's a lot easier for them to get rid of you. 
So I wanted to kind of get that out here really. That was definitely, I wouldn't say it was so much a failure, it was, it was all part of me learning and I loved every moment of being in that company. I'm still very grateful for my, for my jump start in what I had really, because it allowed me to buy a property in the UK, it allowed me to do so many things at a young age, so I'm very, very grateful. But needed that better relationship. Now when you're 20, 21, you need that relationship. I'm 35 now, I own my own company, and I'm not allowing others to control my life. But if you're within a business, you need to have those relationships. So who can you start building those relationships with, make them stronger, and it doesn't just need to be the director of the company, there's other people. And if they have an ear, if they have an influence, at the end of the day, they make the decision, but if you've got people that can push your name forward, make sure you get that promotion, make sure you keep your job, because as I said, you're wondering why you might have lost your job, it's potentially because you didn't have that relationship, and when it came to it, you were easy to get rid of. These are just the facts. You were an expense, you might have been earning money, but they didn't think of you, they didn't think of you emotionally when it came down to it. So that was the first one I wanted to talk about, and the second one is that I'm building this program at the moment, and this is the seven principles to building a successful career, because it isn't just about sell me this pen in sales, it's about building a career. I want you to be recession proof, I want you to have that longevity where you're not relying on just making sales, you've got people championing you within the business. And again, like a lot of this is, is uh, bringing up some stories, but I launched this, so I decided to do this around about seven months ago, and I went full steam ahead, and I've built the methods, and I've built the foundation of it. But since lockdown was lifted, I've been able to see people get out there, and this online part of it, yes, it's a focus, but it's not been the real focus. So have I developed it as much as I wanted to? No, definitely not. Should I get upset about that? No, because if I take this, which, I'm, which is what I'm doing now, which I wanna talk about, and I say, right, if by this time next year, I would have completed this sales training program, yeah, with these seven methods of building a successful career, I would be very happy. If everything was live on it, I would be ecstatic about it. So what have I got to do within that year for me to get there? Now, if I've got seven principles and I've got five to eight topics within each principle, that's 35 to 40 videos. If I'm doing one a week within that time, because it potentially that is what it will take. I've got to write the script, I've got to write the content, I've got to make sure I come across the right way, I've got to do the editing, these things have got to be done. So if you say, oh, let do a video each day, potentially that's not possible. So let's be realistic. One video per week, 52 weeks in a year, yeah? So if I'm gonna do, let's say, let's say 50 videos I do, I've got one to do each week, and, and that is it. That is realistic, but we get so caught up in this, gotta do it now, gotta have it done now. And the truth is, realistically, it wasn't, you weren't able to do it within that time. So if you've got this job on at the moment and you're getting overwhelmed with it, break it down, and I say this, break it down into these bite-sized chunks, but if you say by this time next year, if I have this done, I'll be ecstatic. Yeah, there's a lot of people which are doing nothing at the moment, and I'm not comparing myself to them, but we're battling to be in this 1%, and that 1% is tough, 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 tough. And to, for, you, for you to go from the 99% to the 1% like that, the likelihood is it's not gonna happen. But if you do those bite-sized chunks within a year, you finish that program you want to do, or you finish that degree you want to do, or you, whatever it is, I'm speaking to you, I don't need to say exactly what it is, because I know this is resonating with you. Whatever you're looking to do now, don't be putting so much pressure on yourself, it has to be done now. Yeah? I know we're in lockdown and I know that all the times are tough and this is what I'm saying, I need to be online and I've got to get this sales training program started. This time next year, this time next year, Rodders, if you're from the UK and you know Only Fools and Horses, you'll know what I'm referencing there. But he always, the guy in the program, he always said, this time next year, Rodders, we're gonna be millionaires. Well, this time next year, What's the date? The date is the 11th of November. I will have this sales training program done. Potentially, I'll have it done before then, but all of it's gonna be done by this time. All of the text, all of the audio, the website, everything. 
and I'm gonna get on with my day job of meeting people, doing sales training face to face. I can still do the online training, but this sales training is, is what my passive income is gonna come from. You go online, you sign up, it's X amount. Let me know, drop a message what you think a sales training program should be worth really. Yeah, seven principles to building a successful career. Not just a sales career, a career, what it takes. So we're looking at um, adapting to change, we're looking at building your confidence, we're looking at emotional intelligence, all of these things, very, very much important. Remember, that manager wasn't emotionally attached to me, so he made an easy decision. It would have been a tough decision to get rid of me if he knew me personally every single way, every single step of the way. It would have been a lot tougher for him. But you can't rely on people. So if it means you starting your own company and getting out there, do it. But I'm not here to push that on you. Would I be happy being a successful number three, number four, number five in the business? Yeah, but it didn't happen. Now I'm doing my thing and I will be successful with it. So I've gone on a little bit here. 11 minutes in total, that's not too bad. But there's a couple of other things I wanted to talk about. And I'm trying to think what they are, so let's, let's keep on going on with here. But I'm doing interviews with people. And last week I interviewed one of my good friends, Matt, who's launched a, a prop tech business, which is legal packs in the UK. If, you have a, if you've got a property you're looking to buy at auction, if you want to know the, the ins and outs of what that uh, property is, the grounding, the, um, the, the structure of the building, you need to buy a legal pack. And the legal pack can cost 350 upwards, 300 pounds upwards. It's a lot of money, especially if you're not going to be buying the legal pack or buying the property or get the property at the end. So they have streamlined the process, they've made it shorter, and it's costing 95 pounds VAT. Great, brilliant. So if you haven't watched that, get on with it. It's on YouTube. Yeah, you'll see it on my page. It's a really good interview. I put him uh, on the spot a couple of times, so that's quite cool to see. But this is what I'm doing, I'm putting this content, I'm documenting, I'm interviewing people, but I need some more people to interview. So if you know anyone that has a good story and you feel that they need to be out there more, drop a message to me and let's have a chat with them. But I wanna say, just round this up and say, if you're worried about your job at the moment, build relationships within the business, that's what's gonna protect you. Keep on doing your job as well. Being indispensable isn't just about bringing in deals, as I said, it's about being having that relationship with the, with the decision maker. Because if they can decide to get rid of you like that, you haven't got the relationship with them. And the second part of this is that I've made a commitment, and that is by this time next year, that sales training program will be done. I potentially will have it done quicker, but I'm not gonna get upset about it because I've not done it now. Because I would get upset about that sometimes, be like, oh, I should be doing more here. But no, I'm doing stuff each day, I'm getting out there. I even had a guy approach me today and want to chat with me tomorrow. Yeah, why is that? It's because I'm putting out content on a daily basis. He's seen my video on, on, on LinkedIn and he contacted me and now I'm having a chat with him tomorrow. You cannot assume that people are going to remember you. Remember this, okay? This was my other point. You cannot assume that people are going to remember you. You have to be out there. Oh, this guy was going to give me a call. No, they go on to all these social medias and if you're not on there daily, they will forget about you because the next person will be on there. So keep putting content out on a daily basis. I'm looking in the mirror here right now. I'm going to keep putting my content out on a daily basis. These podcasts will be done on a weekly basis. You're going to keep on seeing me and at some point you're going to be thinking, I really want to bring that guy onto my show. I really want to get him to train my sales team because his values match what we're looking to do within the company. So if you feel even right now that you want to have a chat with me, my information is in the box below. Any questions you want to ask about problems that you're facing with your sales or building a career, I'm happy to speak with you. No charge, let's have a chat. Yeah, no problem. I'm trying to bring as much value to people as possible. But if you can like, share, comment, spread this out as far as possible, I'm trying to spread as much value as possible. I'm gonna round this up like I do with my one minute videos. That's it for today. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot guys. This is a bit off, off screen so I'm gonna stop this now. That's my Spotify and Apple Play done. YouTube guys, thank you so much for watching. Mum, 
I'll hopefully see you soon. Um, it's been a long time, but love you and I'll speak to you later. Bye.